Yes then guys, how are we all doing? My name's Morsi and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are taking a step over to the Premier League and we're going to be taking a look at some of the most sweatiest Premier League starter cards available. And when I say sweaty, I mean it. But before I get into this one guys, if you are new around here and you're enjoying this content, please do consider dropping me a subscription down below. We smashed 1.7k. 1.8k is the next goal. I know we can hit it, so let's do it. But enough waffling, sweaty Premier League starter team. Let's go. And as usual for this one, we are going over to FootWiz, guys. A fantastic website that you can kind of mock up starter squads. As soon as a player is officially announced, they will have them up and running in the database. You can set up a squad builder like this, have a little play about, try and create your favourite starter team. However, every single card in this one is not actually on the official FIFA 22 database as of yet. I got all the stats from that top 1000 ratings leak a couple of days ago. So these are the legit FIFA 22 stats. However, I'm mocking at the cards myself and I'm going to overlay them on the screen. But let's stop messing about and let's get stuck into this sweaty Premier League side and in goal any Premier League goalkeeper literally you could have any single goalkeeper that floats your boat but for this one I'm using the Cycling GK mainly because Fraser Foster himself is an absolute legend I've loved watching his YouTube channel over lockdown getting to see the behind the scene action and I mean why not he's a 78 overall goalkeeper he's going to be cheap as chips early doors guys um, I don't know if he's going to be amazing on FIFA 22, but let's hope that he is. He gets that little hidden in-game boost. But real talk, any Premier League goalkeeper that is somewhat affordable, chuck him in here. You know how starter goalkeepers tend to work. They're not the most meta cards in game, unless you're going for the super high-end cards like Edison or Allison. But we're having a bit of fun in this one, and we are going to be using the legend, Fraser Foster. Heading over to the right-back position, we've got a recently transferred player to the Premier League. He plays for Spurs. It's Emerson. Now, this man is the ideal starter right-back in the Premier League. You've got pace. You've got decent defending and physical stats. You've got a bit of dribbling. And you also have a little bit going forward. He's not obviously going to be super clinical in the box. The shooting is only 62. But to be fair, that's not shambolic for a fullback. And realistically, are you going to have him in front of goal? Probably not. I believe he's got a plus one upgrade from a 78 last season round. Still under the 80 bracket, which is fantastic. With that new team of the week, dynamic potential, I believe it is. Is that what it's called? I honestly don't know. I've not looked too much into it. I will do before the release of EA Access though. Every card that is under 80 overall, the first team of the week that they receive, they will get that hidden injection. A bit of roids to up that card to a higher rating. I've seen a few leaks going around of Bellingham and the sweaty centre-backs like LaCroix being like 84 overall with 90 plus pace, which is mental. But if this man pulls off a madness for Spurs, which is very possible, then we could get our hands on a very, very, very nice team of the week card. So centre-back number one in this team. If it's a running trend from what we've seen so far in FIFA 22, he's going to have pace. It's expected. Every single league has about two or three meta centre-backs now with 80-plus pace. Premier League's not messing about either. We've got Godfrey. This man had like a 72 overall silver last season, I believe it was, and they've gone up to a low-rated gold rare with 83 pace. I'm not surprised now. It's the norm. It doesn't shock me anymore seeing a defender with 80-plus pace. I come to expect it. I'm not going to lie, though. I am a massive fan of seeing centre-backs with a little bit more pace about them. Realistically, if you look at it, guys, if you watch football, centre-backs aren't that much slower than other forward players. However, it is going to be slightly interesting to see how the game plays when you've got these super sweaty, fast centre-backs floating about the place. It's going to be interesting. I'm excited to give it a go, and we are so damn close to release. Four days now until EA Access and the web app comes out. Put out a community poll post yesterday asking you what you guys are going to be doing on that EA Access. If you you're getting your hands on it i believe it's super cheap especially if you've not used it before you can get it for like 79 pence for a month just make sure you get it cancel it straight away so it doesn't renew and get the most out of that 10 hours but godfrey looks crazy for a starter card hopefully he's not too expensive as well but his center back partner still has a bit of pace about him not quite in the 80 bracket though we got konza Oh, mate, I love this man. I think he's an absolute baller in the real world. Super underrated centre-back with so much potential playing for Villa. He definitely will get himself that big move at some stage in his career, I'm sure of it. Still has 77 pace. It's pretty respectable, you know. It's nothing to really write home about nowadays. We're expecting 80 plus, but 77 will take it. Offensively solid, physically solid, and dribbling's pretty good as well. Both of these guys look like somewhat ball-playing centre-backs. I don't know how important that's going to be, but either way, if your centre-back has a bit of agility, a bit of ball control, it's only going to help you out. So heading over to left-back, we have got the first bit of Arsenal bias in this video, and I'm a little bit shocked under the rating that this man got. I expected a little bit higher, especially the pace. This man's rapid in the real world. We've got the flying Scotsman, Braveheart himself, Kieran Tierney. Now guys, let me know realistically, do you think this man has been a bit shafted? I feel like he's a little bit quicker than 84 pace. He was pinging goals for fun as well. That goal he scored against West Brom last season was an absolute screamer. 60 shooting. Emerson's got higher than that. 
But realistically, this does work out in our favor. Because he's not super juiced and super meta, he might be a little bit more affordable this year around, which is fantastic. I would love to snap him up early. And with the right chem style, like an anchor or a shadow, he's going to be lightning quick anyway. So who really cares? Dribbling's great. Passing is fantastic. He's got the physical. He's got the stamina. He doesn't stop running. Defending needs that little bit of boost of a chem style. But overall, he's super solid starter left back. So that is the back five guys. What do you think so far? Are they going to be able to hang with the better teams like the Bundesliga centre-backs? Probably not, but they're still very, very solid. But moving up to the midfield, this man's starter card last year was absolutely mental. For the first few weeks, maybe even a month into this game, this man had a 79 overall that was selling for easily 30 to 50k, which is crazy. There was so much supply on the market, but there was equally so much demand. And it's probably going to be the same way around this year. We got Sissoko. Recently transferred to Watford. I was actually lucky enough to watch this man play in real life last week against Wolves. And he's an absolute beast. He's a unit. He bosses the midfield. And his technical game actually quite surprised me. He's very good at linking up the play. A lot of the passes did, did in all fairness go up for throw-ins or corners or whatever. But there was little moments of magic that this man was pulling off that surprised me. However, you're not getting this card into your team to be that playmaker. To add that little electric spark in the team. You're getting him in your team to be an absolute bulldozer, a bully in the middle of the park. As you can see, the physical is 87. He's lost a little bit of pace, that's fine. 74 is still very nice. He's got decent dribbling, decent defending, and decent passing. You want him kind of marshed in that midfield, being the midfield general. Have him sweeping up, have him bullying, pushing people over, just kind of dictating the play, and you're going to be just fine. And next we got a guy, he's kind of got a blessed starter card. He wasn't fantastic last year round. However, there's leaks that he's got four-star skills this time, which is fantastic. However, the skill moves and the weak foot on the kind of top 1,000 leaks are all over the place. They kind of messed up the stats a little bit. But this guy's card is pretty crazy for a starter card. We got Lo Celso. Very interesting card. He's very, very technically gifted with the dribbling and the passing stats. He doesn't offer too much going forward. He's not the quickest of players. But he's got decent physical and respectable defending for that kind of all-round centre midfielder. With the right chem style, though, to kind of have him as that kind of sitting midfielder, maybe just alongside Sissoko, kind of playing that Perlo role alongside a bruiser of a midfielder. Pinging passes and progressing the ball forward, this guy could be fantastic. And the dribbling stats are going to help, and the four-star skill moves. Trying to break the press, get out of tight situations, this card is going to be able to do just that. And here's the hoping as well that he does have four-star skill. And what's that, you say? Another Arsenal player. Really? You, you want another Arsenal player? Because you're going to get one. Oh, Martin Odegaard. I had to do it. I couldn't not. He's gone down to an 82 overall, but he still has his five-star skill. Move. As I said, the Arsenal bias is going to be strong, guys. I do apologise. But he's got a very similar card to La Salsa in regards to the passing and the dribbling. It's a little bit better, which is great to see. He's going to be the more attacking out of the three midfielders. Especially defensively and physical is a little bit on the lower side, which is fine. Definitely give this man like a Hunter Kemp style juice at that pace, the shooting stats. Make him a lethal number eight. Kind of that advanced midfielder. He can trap back if need be, that is fine. But you want to kind of get in the ball in tight situations. Ping your passes, threading through some of the wingers that you're going to see in a minute. And kind of creating a little bit of a spark in the team. So here we go then, guys. When I said this is a sweaty Premier League starter team, I damn well meant it. And we're starting things off with Man. He's actually got himself a downgrade, but be a lot. This could come in clutch. We got the Frenchman, Alain Saint Maximin. I was a little bit surprised he did get himself a downgrade, in all fairness. He was probably Newcastle's shining light alongside Joe Willick last season. The pace 91, he looks a lot quicker in the real world, but it's still pretty respectable. Dribbling should be a little bit higher, I reckon. Shooting wise, he scores a lot of goals for Newcastle, especially this season. The goal he scored against Leeds last night was fantastic. The composure was amazing. Passing being 70 is okay, I guess. Defensively physical, we're going to put that aside. Enough, that does not matter at all with his card. But with the right chem style, maybe just focus on shooting and passing. He's still going to be pretty solid in the game. And of course, it's the second five star skiller in this team. And as I said earlier with Emerson, the new team of the week kind of concept, if he does end up getting a team of the week, it's going to be super juiced. I believe he'll go up to an 84 overall in that first team of the week card, which is going to be beautiful. Getting flashbacks to that 83 overall team of the week he had last year around, my girlfriend actually packed me him in a blind pack opening that we did towards the start of FIFA. And he was in my team for like 500 plus games. It was unreal. But very similar to last year round, this man is going to be premium. He's going to be super expensive. Last year was about 50 to 100k, somewhere in that ballpark for a couple of months. Probably going to be paying a similar price this time round also. So let's head inside to the striker. We'll leave the right wing to last. We've got a man who has been a meta starter card for many, many years. It's Anthony Martial. His rating has progressively been getting worse throughout the last few years. I believe he went for like an 84, an 83, down to an 81. But he's still very, very solid early game. Pace is taking a little bit of a tank, but that's fine. 87 is still very nice. 85 dribbling, and that 80 shooting is clutch. 
You're going to need somebody who's clinical, especially with the two wingers either side. You maybe don't have the most reliable shooting stats. 80 shooting is fantastic. Hopefully this man will find the back of the net many a times. Four star, four star is what you can expect with this card as well. And he's got that kind of build, that powerful running build that makes it hard for defenders to match. I say that. Probably not this year because all defenders are maybe quicker than this guy anyway. But hopefully with the little downgrade in rating and stats, he may be a little bit more affordable. Last year round, he was super expensive. 100 to 150k early game. I don't think that's going to be the case this time. And to finish up this team, we have got an absolute speed demon. It's the big man, Adama. Do I really need to go into detail about this man's card? It's pretty much the same as last year round. It's just quick. Got very good dribbling, very good pace. The rest of the card is a little bit lackluster. 81 physical is mainly strength and stamina. He's a little bit on the smaller side, so he can't really leap too much like a salmon, but he's gonna have the biceps to kind of push off defenders off the ball. And that pace and dribbling is gonna be beautiful early game. But very similar to Alan St. Maxim in the shooting and the passing are a little bit inconsistent. Definitely look to focus on those with the chem style if you manage to put this team together. But either way, the pace, the dribbling, it's just gonna be beautiful to see. And four star skills as well. So we got some skillers in this team. Couple of four stars, maybe a couple of five stars as well. You should be having a bit of fun. That is where I'm gonna end this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it as always. Just wanna say a massive thank you for the re-support. It really means a lot to me, guys. And I am so excited for the start of FIFA 22. Make sure to get down in the comment section and let me know a player that you would sub in for this team. And recommend a team for me to do as well. I'm still looking to mock up a couple more squads before the release of EA Access. So let me know down below. Anyway, guys, until next time, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll catch you soon for another one. Take it easy.